Wine, one of the oldest and most beloved beverages, is a complex and fascinating subject that combines history, culture, art, and science. Understanding the elements of wine involves exploring various aspects, but we're here to cover just the basic components of what's in your glass. So buckle up, beginners and grape geeks alike, and let's splash right into the first element. Welcome to Wine Basics by Philip Pino, where we create wine education videos for beginners and wine lovers. The first element, sweetness. The first element we will cover is a wine's level of sweetness. All wine is made from pressed grape juice, which is full of natural sugars. The riper the grape is, the higher level of sugar it contains. The level of sweetness in wine is measured by the amount of residual sugar that's left after the fermentation process is complete. During the fermentation process, yeasts convert the grape sugars into alcohol. Winemakers can control the sweetness levels through different techniques, such as stopping the fermentation early to retain sugar or fortifying the wine with spirits. The perception of sweetness starts at the tip of your tongue and can range from bone dry to sweet. Dry wines are fermented until all the sugars have been converted into alcohol, with little to no residual sugar, ranging between 1 and 5 grams. In contrast, a sweet wine may have around 35 grams of sugar or more, especially in rich dessert wines. Pro tip, when swirling a sweet wine around your glass, take a look at the rivulets or legs that appear in the glass. These legs will descend back into the wine. As a general rule, the sweeter the wine, the higher the viscosity in these legs, causing them to look thicker in appearance and fall down slower. The second element, acidity. Acidity is responsible for the tartness and zing in a wine, providing freshness and balance. You may sense a sharpness when you take a sip of wine. It's a similar sensation to what you feel in your mouth when you bite into an orange or lemon. Acidity is responsible for a wine's longevity and ability to age. Wines that have high acidity may feel lighter in body, zesty, and even a bit spritzy. The acidity in wine can cause a tingling sensation on the sides of your tongue. Some common high acid wine descriptors are crisp, bright, and racy. Lack of acidity in a wine is often described as flabby or flat. Grapes that are grown in cool climates, such as Chablis and Marlborough, New Zealand, make white wines that taste more acidic and refreshing. White wines typically have higher acidity levels than red wines. The third element, tannins. So what is all the hype about tannins? Tannins are chemical compounds that belong to a larger compound group called polyphenols. Tannins are often most prominent in red wines since they're extracted from grape skins, seeds, and stems that are present during fermentation. They provide structure and are often associated with the astringent quality in wine that dries out your mouth. Tannins also come from oak barrels when the wine is aged in them. They make up a very thin percentage of the final wine but are an essential ingredient. Believe it or not, white and rosé wines can have tannins, albeit very discreet. Tannins come in a wide range of intensity, from extremely soft to very harsh. Younger tannic wines can be decanted to soften tannins before serving. This oxygen contact will cause a wine's tannins to take on a silky-like texture and creates a pleasant smoothness on the palate. However, with age, these tannins will mellow out. Tannins play a very important role when aging red wines. The older the wine is, the softer the tannins will be. Not only do tannins play an important role in the lifespan of a wine, but they also contribute to the aromatic complexity of the wine and even have health benefits due to their antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. This is one of the reasons for the myth, a glass of red wine a day will keep the doctor away. The fourth element, alcohol. The alcohol in wine comes from the fermentations of sugar by yeast and usually ranges from 8% to 15% by volume, though some wines can be stronger. The percentage of alcohol in a wine is often referred to as ABV, alcohol by volume. Alcohol carries flavors and aromas to the nose and contributes to the body and texture of the wine. Alcohol is an integral part of the overall character of a wine and also affects its classification and body. Alcohol levels can influence the balance of a wine too much alcohol can make it feel heavy, while too little might leave it feeling thin. Everyone has a different perception of alcohol, 
which can interestingly be affected by our individual genetic makeup. Grapes that ripen fully, which is very common in hot climate wine regions, tend to have higher alcohol levels than those grapes that mature in cooler regions. Wines with higher alcohol content might give a warming sensation and can appear more full-bodied. This leads us to the last of the five elements. The fifth element, body. Last but not least is the body of the wine. The body of the wine is the result of several factors, including alcohol level, sugar content, tannin, and amount of extract. The body of a wine is generally categorized as being light, medium, or full. A simple way to describe a body of wine is to compare it to water and whole milk. A light-bodied Sauvignon Blanc will more closely resemble water, and a full-bodied Syrah can be compared to a thick cream. A fuller-bodied wine might have higher alcohol and flavor intensity, while a lighter-bodied wine might be more refreshing and delicate. And those are the five elements of wine. Now use your new knowledge and find yourself a well-balanced wine to identify all these elements.